Welcome back to Sacred Web Connections. I'm your host, Dara Bracamonte. Much love and light to you all. What are spirit guides? In this episode, we'll talk about spirit guides. Everyone has them. Most actually have several. But first, a couple of quotes for you. At any moment, you have a choice that either leads you closer to your spirit or further away from it by Thich Nhat Hanh. You think of yourselves as humans searching for a spiritual awakening, when in fact you are spiritual beings attempting to cope with a human awakening. Seeing yourselves from the perspective of the spirit within will help you to remember why you came here and what you came here to do. By the group. Before I begin, I also want to explain my idea of quote-unquote God and ego. When I say God, it's also interchangeable with source, a higher power, or universal energy. I'm not speaking of the God from a specific religion. I am in no way, shape, or form religious. In fact, I can't stand a lot of religions because of the rules and perceptions. I believe in God as a higher power, the source that runs through all of us. When I speak of Jesus, I speak of him as a master healer, not a religious icon. I also speak a lot about the ego, and not in terms of being egotistical or egocentric. The dictionary definition is a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. That is not what I'm referring to. In psychological terms, according to Sigmund Freud, which we know he had some crazy ideas that were pretty interesting. The ego is the psychological component of personality that is represented by our conscious decision-making process. It's basically the way we identify with who we are and how we interact with the world. When I speak of ego, I'm referring to the mental body, the mind, the part of you that's human. Now, I try to look at everything in life from two different views, one of the ego or human consciousness and one of the spirit or energy or soul. When we say there's two sides of every story, I believe that's true. There's the ego side and the soul side, but that's for another day. Now back to our topic, a spirit guide is your invisible warrior, the whisper leading you to safety, the truth bumps letting you know that you're on the right path, or the song that brings release. Your spirit guides volunteer to be your silent way shower. They exist whether you believe in them or not guiding you along your human experience and spiritual path. You must quiet your ego or your mind to hear that subtle voice of spirit. Spirit guides have a much broader view of your world and what you signed up for in this lifetime. To set the context a bit, I'll let you in on some things that I have come to believe through my personal experiences. I really believe that you choose your own adventure before being incarnated into a human body. That on an energetic ethereal level, you sit down with your spirit posse, your spirit guides, your angels, and a higher power, and you decide what it is you want to experience in this lifetime. This becomes a new sacred contract. If you're interested in learning more about your soul contracts, I would highly recommend you check out the book Sacred Contracts by Carolyn Mace. It is mind-blowing. This topic is a whole other podcast altogether. I won't go too deep here. But just wanted to let you know, I believe we actually make agreements before we come into this life. Now, if you don't believe this, that's totally okay. I just ask that you have an open mind, an open heart, and then take from these episodes whatever it is that resonates within you. If it doesn't resonate, that's great too, because it helps you determine what does. Spirit guides actually lived on Earth, and possibly other places, and have had many human experiences or past lives. In their last body, they reached a certain point of enlightenment and no longer needed to experience humanity for their soul's growth. Now, they are merged back with Source and volunteer to be guides for other people going into a life experience. The spirit guides are souls, just like you and me, in the spirit form. They are with you all the time. But don't worry, they have no interest in the human body. They don't care to watch you showering or being intimate with yourself or others. So don't even worry about that. Since they have a much broader view of your world and they're able to see your sacred contracts and the records of all your past and future lives, they have the ability to guide you based on your own soul's wants, desires, and needs. If you start to veer off track, your guides will be whispering advice through your physical, emotional, and mental bodies. If your own ego is too loud though, it's extremely hard to hear. So a lot of times you don't hear their wisdom 
the first, second, or third time. Sometimes you need to kick your ass a little bit to make you listen. For example, I was recently in Vegas for work to run a training class. Afterwards, I was supposed to meet up with friends for dinner. Now, I knew the way to get there, but I didn't quite know the neighborhood around the restaurant, so I was using my GPS. For the first 10 miles, my GPS was adamant that I turn left and go a different route. I wanted to take the freeway because it'd be much faster and it's a straighter shot. My GPS seemed louder and more persistent than usual. I was like, what the hell is going on? Why is it being so crazy? At every stop sign or light or even turn, my GPS would tell me to turn left or flip a bitch and make a U-turn. So literally every three minutes, my GPS was telling me to go a different way. For a split second, I did wonder why my GPS was being so weird. That maybe I should pay attention. And then of course I shrugged it off and went my merry way because egoically, I knew the best route. It wasn't so merry. I turn onto the freeway, and two minutes later, I hear this loud clink. A couple minutes later, I could feel my tire was flat. Son of a bitch. I turned around and headed towards the nearest gas station. I had actually picked up, with my tire, a nine-inch construction screw on the side of the freeway. Now, I found out later there was a huge accident. Several cars actually piled up on the freeway that I was supposed to be on. So that may be why my guys were helping me to avoid that situation. Needless to say, after all was said and done, I laughed my ass off at the fact that my guys whispered, they tapped, they screamed, and finally, they slapped me with a nine inch screw. Now, some of you might be thinking, so what? What makes you think that was your spirit guides? What if it was all just coincidence? And my response to that is, so what? I would personally rather believe there's a larger power at play and that I have invisible spirit helpers to guide me through life. My spiritual beliefs make me extremely happy, full of joy, they're uplifting, and they're inspiring. I would much rather believe in something that makes me happy that other people think is bullshit than believe in bullshit other people believe in that makes me miserable. So it's a choice. Your spirituality is a choice. Now, in my belief system, there is no wrong or right. There's just what is right for you. I've had thousands of experiences which have shaped my beliefs about spirit guides and all things spiritual. And honestly, my beliefs are always growing and changing based on what resonates. What resonated 10 years ago in the old universal energy may not resonate anymore in this new energy. It's up to you. You can choose how you want to feel. And if your beliefs don't make you feel the way you want... Maybe it's time to take a closer look and determine if you believe something because it's been passed down or because your family and friends believe it or it's what your peers believe. Maybe it's time for you to examine your beliefs one at a time and see if they still resonate with you. Do they feel right? Do they feel true for you? If they don't, it's time to do some soul searching and figure out what does feel right. Okay, back to spirit guides. Communication from spirit to include guides is very subtle. I've learned the hard way. It may show up as a random thought, a knowing, a vision, could be a smell or taste, a sense or a feeling, or even a voice, which really makes you feel crazy. When communication from your spirit guides comes through a thought, it's not a normal thought. To me, it sounds the same as my own thought voice, however, there's a different sense that comes with it. The best way to discern a message between your spirit guides and a normal thought is how it shows up for you. So let's say you're thinking about giving your dog a bath and that thought reminds you of the dog you had growing up that hated baths, which reminds you of the old tire swing you used to have growing up in the front yard that your dog would jump on, which in turn reminds you of the broken arm you had as a result of jumping off said tire swing. That is a normal thought process. It's not always linear either. Each thought leads to a different thought or memory, but those thoughts are completely self-directed, whether consciously or subconsciously. Those are your thoughts. Now let's say you're talking to a coworker who's telling you about their child just turning 12 years old, and all of a sudden the thought pops in that they broke their arm from jumping off a swing. That thought is random and came out of nowhere it's likely it came from your spirit guides, and there is a reason for it. Now, if you were to ask your coworker if their 12-year-old ever broke their arm, you might be surprised to hear they broke their arm jumping off a swing at their birthday party last week. Here's another example. 
You may be driving down the road thinking about what you should make for potluck on Friday, when all of a sudden you hear a thought that says, get off the freeway at the next exit. Now you might think, well, that's weird. Why would I do that? My exit is five miles away. Let's say you don't listen, and shortly thereafter, you are rear-ended. Or run out of gas because your gauge was wrong and now you're stuck on the side of the freeway. Or you catch a flat tire. You may not always know the reason for the random thought or feeling, but the point is to show you you are not alone. Somebody is watching over you and trying to keep you safe. You are connected to unlimited knowledge and spiritual truths your guides are trying to guide you with at all times. Now all you have to do is listen. That's easy, right? How do you discern messages from your own brain versus messages from your spirit guides? Your own thoughts will be self-directed. You can direct thoughts consciously by purposely thinking about something, or subconsciously like the story about the tire swing where you don't necessarily remember how you got there, but one thought led to another thought, and then another thought, all connected through a common string from the original thought. Messages from spirit guides are much more random and just kind of show up. There are times that I get ideas from spirit guides as well and think, man, I'm genius. But then looking back, I know it came from them because it was completely random and off topic from what I was thinking about. The biggest problem I had throughout my last 20 years of spiritual life school is not believing that I could hear messages from my spirit guides. On a deep level, I didn't feel worthy enough to have a gift from a higher power to talk to spirit. I didn't feel like I could be quote unquote chosen to have this gift and I didn't deserve to hear my God's helpers because I didn't fit the mold. It's all bullshit. Every single human being on this earth has the ability to talk to, and better yet, hear from their spirit guides. Now, for those that are religious or read the Bible, even Jesus said you could do the same as him and even more. So why is it so hard to believe? Do you really believe that there are special chosen ones like preachers and ministers and rabbis and bishops that can speak to God or higher power or source energy? Hell no. We can all do that. We are all perfectly imperfect and all equal in the eyes of source in the universe. The only thing getting in the way of you connecting to and hearing your spirit guides is you. Your intentions and beliefs will shape your experiences. It'll almost always feel like you are just making things up. That the messages you're getting are just in your imagination. Well, here's another tip. A lot of intuition actually happens in your imagination. It doesn't mean it's not real. Your imagination is just a tool intuition and spirit guides can use to communicate. So how do you get good at communicating with your spirit guides? I guess the better question is, how do you get good at anything? Yeah, that's right. You practice. You have to practice, practice, practice. Some people connect to spirit guides more easily, just like some people have a natural gift for music or math. Some of us, yes, me included, have to work a lot harder at getting good at something, like communicating with your spirit guides, but if you really want it and believe it's worth it, you'll do the work. Now, at the end of the podcast, I'll actually talk about some exercises you can do to connect with your guides, but first, let's cover some of the roles spirit guides can play. One question I get a lot is, how many spirit guides do I have? I believe most people have at least three spirit guides. Some people have hundreds. It really all depends on what you have planned for this lifetime. People that affect big change in the world typically have more spirit guides as they need more guidance than most to affect a positive change. For example, Mother Teresa, Jesus, Buddha, Martin Luther King, Louise Hay, and Obama had several spirit guides each. It also depends on which point of your life you're in. As a baby, you may just have one or two guides to help you navigate this new world. As a teenager, you may have four or five guides to help guide you through one of the toughest times in your life. And then in your older years, you may have less if you're living a simple life without a whole lot of contact with the outside world. There are also animal spirit guides that are with you as well. Some can even be living. They're sometimes known as your power animal, totem animal, or spirit animal, but that's another episode altogether. I believe there are many roles in the spirit guide realm. I will name the seven most common. One is your protector guide. They're usually more of a physical protector. They're larger in stature in the spirit world, and so they can intimidate very easily. Two is gatekeeper guides. 
Gatekeeper guides are usually physical and psychic or energy protectors. So they will protect your energy when you're doing something like astral traveling, which will be another episode, <laughs> or if you're journeying for a shamanic practice. Three is joy guides. Joy guides are there to really guide you to be more joyful and will bring more laughter into your life when you're feeling down. Four, message guides. Message guides are people or animals with a specific message. They usually come into your life pretty quick and leave pretty quick too. Five, healing guides. Healing guides are just that. They help bring more healing when asked for. And they bring in healing for all different bodies, physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual. Six, teacher guides. Teacher guides are usually guides that have been around for a long time. They've guided many other people as well. They're very wise, and they assist in understanding and learning. Seven, animal guides. Again, we'll talk much more in depth about animal guides in a future episode. Animal guides can be living or crossed over. They all have different roles and purposes as well. Some guides are with you for a lifetime, and some are there for a season. It really all depends on your life journey and where it takes you. Now I'm going to answer some common questions I've heard about spirit guides. Do spirit guides have names? Not exactly. Now sure, they've had many names before throughout their many human lives, but once they return to source, there's no longer a need for separation or individuality. So they're just energy. Now, since we are human and we like to put names and labels on things, Spirit guides can give themselves a name to help you connect with them on a more human level. They understand that need and will either pick a name or pick a word or name that is familiar to you so you feel more comfortable. Honestly, they don't give a shit what you call them, as long as you call them. You can name them Spirit Guide like SG1, SG2, SG3 for all they care. The name is more for you than anything else. Is my spirit guide male or female? The answer is yes. <laughs> They really don't have a gender. That is a human condition. They can appear as male or female in your mind, in your imagination or vision. Again, more to make you feel more comfortable with communicating with them. They are just pure energy. However, they do come forward with personality. And a lot of times their personality will either be very similar to yours or completely opposite to really catch your attention. For example, I have two spirit guides that are like me. They're goofy as hell, they're funny, and sometimes they're smart asses. Now I have a couple that are very serious and all about business. And yet another one that is direct and almost rude, or rather forthright without any consideration of my feelings, which sometimes I need, like a kick in the butt. Spirit guides are also great at calling you out on your own bullshit. You can't hide your true nature with them. They know and see all. They don't judge you for it, but they will call you out if you're lying to others or even yourself. Can I ask spirit guides to do things for me? Yes, absolutely. They yearn for your asking. There is no feat too big or too small for your spirit guides. They just want to be of service to you and the universe as a whole. So can you ask your guides to find you a great parking space? Yes. Can you ask them to watch over your loved ones as they pass over to the other side? Yes. Can you ask them to help protect your family? Absolutely. Now, there's a lot of debate on this topic, I know. Some people say you shouldn't ask your spirit guides to do menial tasks like finding good parking or clearing traffic for you. Some say it's too petty for spirit. I believe just the thought of assigning something as menial is a human concept. I feel they just want to help in whatever way they can. Also, if they can clear a parking space for you 10 times in a row every time you ask, I'm pretty sure they would be happy to help, especially if it helps to prove to you there's a possibility they really do exist and they are there to help. Spirit guides, just like Source, can be in an unlimited number of places at one time, as time and space are human concepts. In the world of energy and spirit, there is no time and space, so spirit guides are omnipotent and they can be in a hundred places at once if it helps in your soul's growth. Another thing is they will not do anything against your own free will and they will not mess with your contracts. So if you are meant to feel a certain way or to experience a certain disease, they can't do anything with that. That's part of your life journey. That's part of your soul's growth. 
they will not interfere. Are spirit guides my loved ones that have crossed over? Yes and no. I think it's possible, but I really don't think it's very common. I believe loved ones can come back and play the role of like a guardian angel, but spirit guides actually have a specific job to do. They are assigned to you directly and they're there to guide you for this lifetime. Whereas family and loved ones have the freedom to visit and help anybody. How can I connect to my spirit guides? The best way to connect with your guides is to first release any expectations. I know that's so hard. We expect a lot from a lot. Now, speaking from personal experience, if you expect them to show up a certain way, you will almost always be disappointed. I spent years and years expecting them to show up in the way that I was more comfortable with. Plus, you know, I like proof. I want to see something. I want to feel it physically. So I wanted them to show up the way I wanted to see them and feel them and hear them versus what their actual skill sets are. Some are best for communicating using images. Some communicate through knowing, sensing, or feeling. Some communicate with a different voice in your head, which really sucks when you think you might be schizophrenic, right? Some communicate using metaphors, and then others communicate as your own thoughts. If you don't have any expectations and you're not attached to the end results, you'll be way more successful. Second is you have to believe you are worthy enough. You are godly enough. You are enough, period. You should also keep an open mind. If you believe spirit guides aren't real, when they do communicate with you, you'll never know because you'll be too busy doubting. If you're the type that would likely brush off everything as coincidence, you will not see the magic that exists with spirit communication. So I suggest opening your mind and heart and then be open to the communication, however it shows up. I would also highly recommend you have a book or journal that you record all your experiences in. It will help you later when you look back and see where it all began. Plus, it's great to look and see what guides communicated versus if you listened and what happened when you did or didn't. There are many ways you can connect with your guides. Initially though, I'd recommend starting with meditation. Once you practice meditation enough to quiet your mind and let thoughts just pass through you, you're ready. You can simply ask a question you'd like guidance on and wait for the answer. Here's a tip. The first thought that pops in when you ask a question to the ethers is usually your egoic thought. It's your human reaction, a thought that was initiated by your mind. The next thought, though, is usually from your spirit guides. Just so you know, spirit is not going to come forward with negative information or say things in a negative fashion. They're positive. If it's negative, it's not your spirit guides. It's your mind. So let's say you're in meditation and you ask your guides to help you determine if you should take a new job offer. The first thought may be, well, why leave a job you're great at, you're comfortable with, for something you may not even like? What if you suck at it? Now, that's your ego. The second thought might be, you have a higher potential of reaching your success by taking this new job offer. Don't stay at your old job out of fear. Rather, change because you feel drawn to take this new offer and it feels right. That would be from your guides. You may ask a question like, should I start dating again even though I just broke up with my partner six months ago? Your ego might say, hell yes, we could use a free meal, some drinks, and possibly even a happy ending. Man, I could really use a good lay. That's ego. Your spirit guides might say something like, when you decide to finally throw out all of your ex's clothing from the closet and make room for somebody else in your life, in your bed, as well as your closet, that is when you should start dating again. That would be from guides. Another way is scrying. You can look at a reflective surface such as a point in water, mirrors, crystal balls, or even fire. Get yourself into a meditative mode where thoughts that pop up are acknowledged and then released, and the mind is quiet and clear. Ask a question. Then wait for the answer in the fire, for example. You may get an answer in the form of a random thought, or an image that the fire makes, or maybe you see something in your imagination or your third eye. Lucid dreams. You can practice lucid dreaming, which is where you sort of wake up within a dream and you realize you're in a dream. Then you can actually control it. I rarely lucid dream. I don't really practice it that much. But when I do, the first thing I always do is fly. 
To practice lucid dreaming or to teach yourself how to do that, you can tie a string around your wrist, one that will stay kind of long term like a friendship bracelet. Then set your phone alarm to go off once an hour. When it goes off, touch the string around your wrist and ask yourself if you're dreaming and answer no while you're awake. After a few days of this, your mind will start expecting the alarm, bringing attention to the string on your wrist, and you'll one day ask yourself if you're dreaming, and the answer will be yes. Then in your dream, you can actually go to a location where you believe the spirit guides are at, like a temple, a church, a mosque, a monastery, and then start asking questions. Make note of what they look like, what they want you to call them, or what you want to call them, what culture they might be in, and of course, the answers they give you. The trick is to have a journal by your bed to record everything they told you the second you wake up before it's all forgotten. This string technique actually came from the Hulu show called Evil. It's pretty genius. Tarot or Oracle Cards. If you have tarot or oracle cards, or even a book with quotes of the day, affirmations, or the Bible if you're religious, or really any book, you can get to more of a meditative state where your mind is open, then ask a question and tell your guides to give you the answer when you flip to a page in a book and then place your finger on that paragraph. And then go, ask a question, flip the pages, put your finger on a paragraph, and see what happens. See if it answers your question. If you're not good at sitting or laying down and meditating, you can also go for a walk, a hike, or sit out in nature somewhere and just ask questions. And then be open to whatever answers you receive. It could come in the form of visuals, visions, sound, like birds chirping, thoughts, snowing, feeling, sensings, etc. Synchronicity. This is one of my favorites and I use it often. It's another word for meaningful coincidence. It's like seeing repeating numbers multiple times a week. For example, you look at the clock when you're hungry and it's 11, 11 a.m. Then you go to set your alarm clock before bed and it's 11, 11 p.m. The next day you see 11, 11 on a license plate and the appointment you have to go to is at 11, 11 Marsh Avenue. Numbers alone have a lot of symbology. You can do a Google search for angel numbers, repeating numbers, or even numerology to find out the significance of numbers. Once you find a resource, I would stick to that same one. It's not good to keep searching and searching and searching until you find the answers that you want. Stick with one. Synchronicities are things that happen that give you a sign as an answer to your question, or just a sign that you're on the right path. If I see repeating and meaningful coincidences, quote unquote, and I haven't asked a specific question, I take it as a sign that I'm on the right path. Synchronicities can come in the form of a conversation, a commercial, an actual sign or billboard, which I've had a couple times, a visual, something you hear on the radio, a book, etc. Typically, when you see something three times within a week, that's a good indicator it's actually a sign from your spirit guides, and it's time to pay attention. I believe the most common way to speak to your spirit guides is to use meditation. Meditation, meditation, meditation. It's great for so many different things. I'd recommend meditating using calming music or ambient sounds. Quiet your mind to the point where you can acknowledge thoughts and then let them go. And then ask your spirit guides to join you. Now you may see them behind your eyelids, sense them, feel them, know that they're there even if there's no proof. And then you can ask one or two questions. Remember, the first thought response is usually ego, and it's a natural human reaction to a question. And then it's typically spirit that answers. Write down whatever answers you receive once you're done. Also keep in mind, energy and spirit tend to use a lot of symbology. So if you ask about a trip you want to go on, and see an airplane taking off and landing, that's probably a sign to take that trip. If instead you see a broken suitcase and have feelings of anger, that's a sign you probably shouldn't go. Don't ask too many questions at once, otherwise you may mix up the answers. That is all I have for now. If you have any questions or if you want me to cover some topics that I haven't covered yet, please feel free to reach out to me via Facebook message from my business page, Sacred Resonance LLC. That's Sacred Resonance, R-E-S-O-N-A-N-C-E, 
LLC. I can't guarantee I'll cover it, but I will do my best.